Hello friends and greetings from Iceland. During my last visit to Blue Lagoon a day ago, I stopped at the lava road and took a flight to Skora Skogfit Mountain to explore the newest lava of Iceland again. At the same time, we will go over the latest updates on the volcanic situation in this area, covering the opinions of the leading Icelandic experts, starting from the most known expert, Professor Thorvaldur Thordarsson. Thordarsson, who is the professor of volcanology at the University of Iceland, says that if an eruption does not occur in the next few days, it is likely that there is some obstruction in the system that is blocking magma from going up. My feeling is that it can go either way, but as more time passes by, I think it's less likely to erupt. We have reached the limit of tolerance for what the system has had so far. And if something does not start happening in the next two to three days, I think the chances of an eruption are reduced. And this was said yesterday. Uh, Torvaldur also says that if magma does not get up uh, by its usual route that it used before, it is possible that the magma will enter into another blind fissure as it did on March 2nd. It could therefore be a recurring event from that date. The last eruption in the Reykjanes Peninsula was on February 8th, but on March 2nd, when most people were prepared for the seventh eruption in less than three years, the sequence of events that developed the day ended with a small magma intrusion. Professor Thordarsson continues, When the magma failed to break to the surface on the 2nd of March, one began to suspect that this main route was filled and blocked in its most open fissure sections. And he says that now there are less open fissures and solidified magma there may have become so rigid that it is hard to penetrate. Model calculations from the Icelandic Met Office show that magma accumulation under Svartsengi continues at the same rate as before. In previous events, magma has run when the total amount of magma collected under Svartsengi was between 8 and 13 million cubic meters. The total amount of magma below Svartsengi has exceeded the lower limit. If new magma tries to go up the same route, this barrier can hold it back. Then it will try to look for something else if there are no other ways out there at the Sunnukur Giger crater rope, says Thorvaldur. Another Icelandic volcanologist, Arman Huskulsson, who is the professor at the University of Iceland, uh, believes that we have to wait until the autumn to get an eruption. He says that volcanic activity will next shift to Eldorp Cratero and says that the satellite images show that land rise is moving westwards along the peninsula. I expect this behavior to change once the eruption starts to the west. It makes, it makes it easier for the magma to get straight up there and then we will probably have longer eruptions and possibly some different behavior, Armand tells to the morning newspaper. Uh, it is not unlikely that the next eruption will come in the autumn, he thinks. Uh, seismic activity has occasionally been felt in Fagradalsfjall in recent weeks and months. The land rise at Fagradalsfjall is negligible though, compared to the rise in at Svartsengi. According to Arman, and he says uh, that he considers seismicity in Fagradalsfjall is due to the divergence between Eurasian and American tectonic plates. The last eruption of Fagradalsfjall volcanic system was in July last year. Arman says that for him, the Fagradalsfjall mountain system has completely entered the Eurasian tectonic plate. The Fagradalsfjall mountain is the kind of area that shouldn't see eruptions, it was this tectonic tensions that were initially released that resulted in those fissures forming up there and the magma coming to the surface. Uh, this is not really a typical glitch event like we are watching at the Sunnukar Yigar crater and we will see in Eldorp and Reykjanes Tau, says Arman. 
Magnus Tumi Goodmanson, who is a professor of geophysics at the University of Iceland, believes that the eruption is likely to start in the coming days and by far the most likely location will be the middle of the Sunuka Gigar crater fault. He thinks that this scenario is possible that the next eruption will develop as the continuous magma flow. It's likely to be a short eruption. I would be surprised if it wouldn't happen within a week. He said this on March 11th, two days ago. If nothing happens, it w I would be a little surprised, says Magnus to me. He thinks that the eruption is likely in the next few days because the land rise keeps uh, going and it seems to be accumulating just about the same amount of magma each day as it has been for several months now so we are not seeing the end uh, to these events says the professor as to the location of the next eruption he thinks it will most likely erupt again in the middle of the Sunukur fissure line that's uh, where the rift is and it's a question of whether it will happen happen in the middle of that fissure or if magma will be looking to break up more to the north or slightly more to the south i think we have to consider uh, it uh, by far the most likely scenario because it is the easiest way for the magma up uh, the sunnuk official line if magma wants to go any other way it needs to break up the crust and such a thing couldn't be missed then we would see a lot of seismic activity and deformation and a lot of noise already if uh, it would start happening somewhere else the easy way is there so by far it's the most likely says professor magnus to me goodman song similar opinions had been expressed uh, today by freistein sigmundson who is a uh, geophysics professor at the University of Iceland. He says the situation uh, at Reykjavik is similar to yesterday. Earthquakes are continuing, uh, but it is good to know that tectonic activity has slowed it, uh, down. There continues to be evidence of magma inflow into this underlying metabolic zone. That's why you have to be prepared for everything, he says adding that the Icelandic Met Office uh, hazard assessment is unchanged. But he says uh, there has been no noticeable change in earthquake depths and the models indicate that the magma is at the depths of half to one kilometer. When um, asked about the last magma intrusion, uh, Freistein says this was actually the small magma intrusion it was 100 times smaller than the one uh, on the 10th of November. Yes, no wonder people are asking about this. We don't know exactly what are the conditions down there in the Earth. The Earth is unpredictable and we need to keep that in mind. All predictions about when there will be volcanic eruptions are based on certain assumptions and we don't know how good they are or whether they always apply. And they can change. But what happened on uh, March 2nd was that the magma had been accumulating in this uh, soil area under Swatsenge and it started moving. A minimum pressure was reached to allow magma to move and it went in. But we don't know which uh, tunnel magma used it. If it's the same magma tunnel, this can be a little bit off site maybe. But it started a tunnel intrusion and when magma starts moving from this magma chamber it is under a certain pressure because it is under a certain collection area where the pressure builds up. It's kind of safe to say that there is a pressure building up there because that's the only explanation to explain the land rise that we see that has been steady. The magma just has a bit of difficulty getting through that depth gap because then the cross has become lighter in this place and it didn't breach it uh, earlier this month and continuing now pressure builds up when a minimum pressure is reached the magma starts moving and when it is going at this depths uh, that is about five kilometers deep it has a certain help it has a pulling power for the same reason that we float up if we jump into a swimming pool because it's lighter in itself than the rock around it 
but then it reaches a certain barrier in maybe the last one or two kilometers of the crust. He says that volcano may start erupting even today with little, with little notice, but it doesn't mean anything. It's about as likely tomorrow or the next few days or next week. And then there is the fact that these assumptions can change, and we know that uh, there is a trend in the behavior of volcanoes that are in such uh, activity period. Then it becomes more difficult with time for the magma to reach the surface, so it may be more time between events. While this pressure increase in occurs, uh, uh, what we can say is that as the time goes on, because there is more pressure building up below the ground, there is a greater and greater chance of uh, magma reaching the surface. Likewise, the latest report from Icelandic Med Office states there are still high chances of volcanic eruption and it looks like that more magma needs to accumulate on the Svartsengi than before to trigger the eruption or an intrusion. Uh, this was reported today. Likely scenario over the next few days, according to the Icelandic Met Office, magma volume on the Svartsengi continues to increase, which could culminate in a new magma intrusion and even a volcanic eruption. An eruption could begin at very short notice, even less than 30 minutes. An eruption is most likely to occur in the, to occur in the area between Stora Skogafat and Hangafat. Uh, latest functional changes uh, signs that more magma needs to accumulate under Swatsangi than before to trigger a new eruption. We are flying above the protection wall or lava berm, which was made artificially made uh, to protect uh, geothermal power plant of Swatsangi in the Blue Lagoon from the possible uh, lava flow and this is the Grindavik road that leads to the town of Grindavik it's closed for now and is accessible only to the residents of the town those are the latest volcanic updates from Iceland I wish you all the best peace and blessings from Iceland God bless you be well